Welcome to Homeschool Art. Today we're going to be talking about cave art, the oldest art known to man. The oldest known cave art has been found in Australia, Asia, Africa, and Europe. Most cave art was created during the Paleolithic period, between 40,000 and 10,000 years ago. There are some examples that date back even further. The art was produced by early Homo sapiens and sometimes by Neanderthals. A lot of cave art depicts animals such as bison and horses, mammoths, deer, and other wildlife. Sometimes they painted people. They also depicted other abstract signs and designs. Because it was so long ago, really everything is just a guess as to why they drew those on their cave ceilings, their cave walls. The subjects of cave art are believed to be significant, maybe religious or rituals and things about daily life. The artists use all kinds of different things. For example, you'll see a ton of black in their art. And that's probably my guess is that they took sticks and they had them in the fire until they were kind of black and they made charcoal. And then they used those sticks and they were able to draw on their walls. They used other pigments as well. Perhaps they crushed up some, some rock and added some fluid to it, like water or other things. Maybe they used the blood of animals, I'm not sure. If you took a leaf, you could scrape it on something and the color would come out as a really light green. Maybe they used something like that. They also etched on their walls using flint, which is a super hard rock, or bones. Archaeologists and anthropologists love to study this cave art and what it might mean. And they've learned all kinds of things about how people lived thousands of years ago. Some of the art depicted show animals or show hunting scenes. There are some walls that are just handprints all over the walls. There are some people who think maybe they drew animals when they wanted them to come back so that they could hunt them again. Maybe they were hungry. They probably didn't understand migration back then. Migration is when an animal leaves from one point and travels for a while and then comes back to that same point. Many whales start in the north in the Arctic and they will travel all around the oceans, finally return to where they started. You can see that in albatross. The albatross birds fly for thousands of miles and return eventually to where they started. So some people think that maybe they drew animals hoping that they, that if they drew them, that they would come back so that they could hunt them again because they were hungry. Today, I don't have inspirational quotes, but we do have an activity. You could get any colored paper, but we used brown. I had a whole roll of brown construction paper and I set it across our tables outside. We use a limited palette. I'll talk about palettes in just a few minutes. We use black because that's what they would have had for because they had charcoal. They used reds and oranges and some yellows. You can get a rock and when you scrape it along another rock, it leaves a white residue behind. So maybe they use something like that as well. But today we used acrylic paint. We had black, orange, yellow and white. We had to think what was something so interesting about your life? Do you have an animal or a pet that you love? Or do you have an activity that your family does a lot? One of my students said she loved gardening and so she drew a sunflower and other things that showed that. I had two of my sons do this. They both loved doing their handprints. They did that at the very end because then your hand is super messy and you've got to go wash it off. I took the end of a stick and dipped it in the black and I made three sheep because we actually have four, but I drew three of our sheep. And then I put a little yellow on their backs just to have a little color on there. I made all of my shapes really simple because that's what they did on their cave art. Most of their, their shapes were extremely simple. Not a lot of musculature. It was just the bean shape for a body or a circle for something and maybe sticks for legs, little lines for, for horns. So they kept all of their shapes very simple. I also did my family in stick figure form. And so I decided to use orange. First I used my finger and I did the heads kind of in a circle. And then I used a stick to draw all the arms and legs and bodies. And I think it turned out fun. So now I'll show you what we did. This is mine. So I have my, see my three sheep with just little stick legs. It was interesting doing it with a stick. It's unexpected. They're thick, thick areas of paint and they're thin areas of paint, but I thought the variation was fun. And then I did the family, my husband and myself, and then my five kids. I had fun. This back here is my son. And he decided to do a monster with one eye going up a hill. And there's his cave. And he has some handprints and 
a little sun in the corner. You can't see it very well because it was yellow on brown paper with a little bit of black, and so it kind of blends in. And lastly, this one's very long because it keeps going and going. So I'll show you little by little. So here is my smallest, and he loved doing the handprints. And he made, a lot of his was just, it's hard for me to hold this right now, just areas of paint that he did. And he smooshed his hands in and felt the paint on his hands, and he thought that was grand. We have <laughs> some more paints and more hand prints and more splotches of color. My inspiration today is not a quote from these artists because we have no records of things that they've said. But I will say that some of the most authentic art is made when you feel something about the subject. If you love your dad and you do a portrait of your dad, I bet you the audience will see that and they will love it because they can feel your love for your dad in that portrait. Or if you have a favorite house and you draw your house and that's where your home is and you love your home, people will feel that and they will be drawn to your artwork because they can feel your love for these things. So I would encourage you to do art, to find things that you are interested in and excited about and paint those things and see how it turns out. Art element or principle of the day, we're going to talk about palettes. A palette is all of the different colors that you're going to use in your artwork. A limited palette would be something that just has a few colors, not a lot. And that's what the cave artists use. They only had a limited variety of colors. I had students ask me, what about blue? What about purple? At least in the cave paintings, there weren't those options and so they didn't have those on their walls. If there was a blueberry, they probably ate it rather than try to put it on their wall to see what it would do. So they used what they had. They used black because of charcoal. They used reds and oranges and yellows for things from things that they found and mixed together and smeared on the wall. So a limited palette means just a few colors. Now there's also monochromatic. That means there's one color used. So if you see a photograph that's black and white, that would be monochromatic. Just one basic color throughout the whole thing. You could have a picture that's all blues, all different shades of one blue. So you could have a, bl a dark blue, then you could have a lighter blue and a, a lightly lighter blue and a little bit lighter. That would be a monochromatic picture. There are triads that have three distinct colors and they mix those together to make all of their colors. Then you have tetradic, which means there are four colors. Maybe you could have an orange, a yellow, a red, and a blue. And you mix all of those colors up to get the, all of the colors in your paintings. You could have a two color scheme. So maybe it's a yellow and a blue and you just use those in your painting. So there are lots of different ways to do a palette. Cave Art used a limited color palette. Sometimes it was monochromatic. Sometimes it was a two color, a three color, possibly a four color, but usually not more than that because of the tools that they had on hand. Thank you so much for visiting Homeschool Art and learning about cave art today. If you could please like and subscribe and then share with your friends who might be interested in this video, that would be amazing because it really helps me. Thanks, bye.